Hi everyone. So this is my first Q&A video that I've ever done. I did the one um, behind the scenes of my uh, Meridian Pharmacy. So you got a little bit of background from me on that one, but <clears throat> not a whole lot. So I, I decided to start the new year um, by answering some of your questions and giving you um, some extra information, not just about me, but about the channel and how it got started, how, uh, how I do things, and plans for the future. So I've got your questions here. And the first one is, how long have I been doing it? And that I've just marked my third anniversary on YouTube. Uh, related to that question is uh, your teaching, training, and managing role plays show natural and very professional skills. Have you had any career in those fields? Um, related, I was wondering what your everyday profession is, or are you retired? Did you go to college? If yes, what did you study and how was the experience? So I think all of that comes together. Uh, I was uh, an English professor, although before that I was a high school teacher and eventually decided to get my PhD and go on to teach literature um, in college. I loved that. I taught Victorian literature. I slowly, over the years, began to move into university administration. Um, so I was no longer teaching. Um, the reason I decided to start was during COVID. <laughs> I, um, I was, without going too much into how university administration works, I was in some respects the number three person at the university and a lot fell on me to handle how to deal with COVID and for those of you that have kids or uh, either in high school or elementary or college, you'll remember the dramatic upset uh, in education at the time. Long story short, uh, I had to develop three um, plans for every one thing we wanted to do. <laughs> depending on if the virus got worse, if it got better, if we could bring some students back, if it was all online. Um, we had faculty who rarely, if ever, used a computer and we were suddenly going to be requiring them to teach online. It took about everything I had in me out of me and I seriously started thinking about retiring early. So that was a huge part of my decision. I actually started my channel just a little bit before I retired to see if I liked it, if it brought me joy and fulfillment, um, if I thought I could make any kind of financial investment that might, um, might give me a return on that. So that's basically how I got started. Um, so what have I done for a living? You've heard about that. Um, so you're right. Um, a lot of my teaching and management type videos 
role plays um, have a lot to do with my real life and I certainly draw on my experiences uh, in doing those role plays. There are a couple of other role plays that go much further back. Um, I, when I was in high school, I worked at a Joanne Fabrics in the 1970s. Um, I also worked at a bank as a teller in the early 1980s um, when I was in college. And let's see. Um, <laughs> I still can't believe I ever did this, but I sold Tupperware. When I was still in high school in 1978, uh, so that was the the line of Tupperware with all the harvest colors, sort of the harvest gold and the oranges and the olive greens. Um, and I I earned my Tupperware kit after having six parties. Um, I got to keep that whole kit forever. Um, basically just pushed it under my bed until I moved out of the house and took it with me. Um, and then a lot of these oral plays, of course, are things I remember other people doing. Um, I'm watching my mom interact with people at the post office or at the department store, or the pharmacy. Let's see. So, um, can I tell you something about my family? Um, I have a husband and two dogs, and uh, I'm not sure if I'll go get Ziggy at some point in this video. I think if you've watched enough of my videos, you've probably seen him make a quick appearance a time or two as a blooper. <laughs> he's a sweet boy. Oh, he's a multi multi poo. Multi Maltese poodle. Um, my husband and I dated in the early eighties and then went to our separate ways for thirteen and eventually ran into each other again and started dating again and got married. So, so my husband and I have actually known each other for a little over 40 years, I guess. 41, maybe. Um, I have a father who is 80, going on 86. He lives locally. One of my favorite, favorite things about retirement is the extra time that I get to spend with him. And I have a brother and a sister-in-law and their adult children and their children. Um, they all live in Indianapolis, which is a, um, it's a half a day's drive from where we live in Ohio. So, do you have family members in the house when you try to film? Do they know to be quiet or do you just kick them out while you film? <laughs> Does your family help you make your videos? Um, so my husband is a great help if he is in the house at the time will go into his office and take the dogs in there and most of the time everybody's content. <laughs> if a truck comes and the dogs start barking then I have to pause the video and, and edit that. What you might not know, well, it probably depends on the type of ASM artist. I think 
when I'm going to watch Maria's videos. Uh, gentle whispering. I rarely see any cuts or edits. I don't know how she makes it through an entire video without some rogue sound or <laughs> um, but I never I never make it through I have to make lots of edits but still my husband is very cooperative it's funny that my dad my 86 year old dad um, and my husband and my sister-in-law my niece she's 35 they all give me ideas for videos, which is sweet. I know there was a little bit of controversy over my um, Juniper Room cocktail lounge video um, because of the cigarettes that were laying there on the counter. Uh, but the funny thing was my non-smoking 86 year old father <laughs> gave those to me they are candy cigarettes um, to, he gave them to me to use in my videos <laughs> he is not a smoker none in my family are smokers so um, I just thought that was funny if you look at them closely you can see the word gum on them um but yes, it, it, it tickles me when my family gives me ideas. It makes me very happy. Where am I from? I noticed that you have a faint accent, um, but I can't place it. Uh, someone else, I love your subtle accent. I think it's perfect for ASMR. Uh, I... Um, maybe to some of you it sounds like I have a slight southern accent. Um, in reality I have an Appalachian accent that has been softened by moving away for 10 years. But I grew up, I was born and I grew up in West Virginia. And um, that's basically where my accent was formed. I didn't leave the state until I was 23, I think. At that point, I moved away for 10 years worth of graduate school and um, eventually made my way back into the area. Back, uh, Currently, I live in Ohio, but it's still technically the Appalachian part of Ohio. So that's what you're hearing. Um, if I'd never moved away, it would have been much stronger. But I'm, I'm very proud of it when people hear it. It makes me smile. Um, what was my... Um, what was my childhood like? Um, and basically, there's two, kind of two parts to this question. What introduced me to ASMR in real life? And what introduced me to it in the ASMR community on YouTube? And I think um, it probably makes sense to talk about my childhood first. Um, questions, do you think it ties into your passion? for nostalgia, your childhood. Did you get real life ASMR as a kid when the Avon lady visited your house growing up? Do you replicate any personal nostalgia or memories when you create any special emotions? Um, would you like to have been a sales lady in the 50s and 60s? Your favorite aspect of 60s culture. So that's a lot, but it's kind of all tangled up. Um, 
Yes, I absolutely experienced ASMR as a child. Um, I'm not sure when, but I do have a clear memory of it happening when I was in first grade. And then other times throughout my childhood and teen years, uh, those were the times when I experienced it the most. Once I got into college and graduate school, I guess maybe my life was too busy to pay attention to the little things, but when you're a kid and a teenager, especially back then, when you're a teenager, maybe not today, um, you have many more opportunities to pay attention to the tiny little things that are happening around you. Um, everything was so much more analog. Hardly anything was automatic. Uh, to accomplish anything, you needed to get in your car and travel to that store, that post office, that bank, that grocery store, that pharmacy, and you had to interact one-on-one -on -one with someone. So I was often tagging along with my mom and quite often would experience ASMR when she was interacting with a clerk. Um, not necessarily when they were talking to each other unless it was a kind of whisper where I could barely hear what they were saying. Um, but I especially liked it when a clerk would start doing things to bring the transaction to a close. So all the things that you have to do with your hands and with objects and paper on the desk. So you know, you know what these things are. Stamping something, leafing through files, um, uh, rustling pages, moving books from one stack to another, looking for something, uh, flipping through a pile of paper clips to pull out just one. Um, all of those things I found absolutely hypnotizing. The thing I would say that's my favorite, uh, the strongest natural trigger in the wild, is when a child is playing by him or herself. Um, so I've got a great two great nephews. They're six and three, and the three one three year old one is at the ideal age, uh, so where he might be working a puzzle by himself, and he is oblivious. <laughs> to anyone around him. And uh, if I'm sitting in the same room watching him, uh, he inevitably talks to himself. So it's the unintelligible whispers. If he's not working a puzzle and it involves little, little play figures, you know, then he'll make one talk and he'll make the other one talk. Um, that little childhood voice and the little clickety clacks as they walk along. Um, it's all very random. Um, so I guess I've always kind of like, I've liked the kind of ASMR that you might call eavesdropping. As opposed to uh, direct interaction with someone. So eavesdropping on a child, eavesdropping on my mom when she's interacting with someone, that sort of thing. Um, 
I had fallen tingles as a child on, on my scalp and down my back of my neck. Um, and I did not believe another human being on the face of the earth experienced that. Um, I don't know, was, I was probably in college before I ever even told anyone. Or maybe it was more like asking, like, do you ever feel like this when something like this happens? And most of the time the answer was no, or they didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, but a, a few, a few people admitted to that tingly feeling. Um, finding it on YouTube was a bit of an accident. I had a friend who had, I don't know, he was probably a four-year-old boy and um, she was exhausted uh, try, just trying to deal with his energy all the time and she, I ran into her at Target once with him she said that she would um, take him home and to try to get him to settle down. She would open up a YouTube video of a woman um, nesting and unnesting Russian nesting dolls, Matryoshka dolls. She said he, she'd put him in front of that screen and all this woman did was unnest and renest and unnest and renest and she said he would just go into a trance I didn't put two and two together at that point but I don't know maybe a couple weeks later I was watching some YouTube videos and it occurred to me um, that I might find the video just out of curiosity. So I looked it up and I indeed found what I believed to be the video and I watched it. And I could see why someone would find it relaxing. Um, it, it didn't um, trigger me or anything, but so that was pretty much that. That's all I was going to do. But because I watched a video that was designed to relax people and it had Russian in it, you can imagine what videos were recommended to the right. And one of them was Maria, gentle whispering. I didn't even know an ASMR community existed at this point. Um, but I'm sure that's why she was recommended because of that relaxation and Russian connection. What I saw was a towel folding tutorial and I didn't have any idea why that was recommended. Um, I don't fold my towels in fancy ways, but anyway, I watched it. And I thought I was going to learn a few things about how to fold towels or dinner napkins or something. And the first thing I remember, she was standing in front of a very reflective dining room table. This was probably in 2010, 2011. And so I could see her reflection up to a certain point. And she would put the towel down and spread it. And she would say that we're going to spread the towel. And we're going to stretch the towel. Just like that. She would always say just like that. And I thought, why is she talking? so funny. 
what is wrong with this woman? She's just giving a towel t tutorial, towel folding tutorial video. I don't know at what point, it was probably two minutes in that I felt my first tingles on my head. Um, it was, I probably watched the whole thing before I read the description and realized that this video was, the purpose was not to learn how to fold my towels. <laughs> <clears throat> and she explained what ASMR was and suddenly <laughs> I realized these experiences I had as a child a teenager occasionally as adult were common that other people had them that they could be in a sense, artificially induced with a video and that there was a world of ASMR videos there just waiting. Of course, at that time, the world of ASMR videos was dramatically smaller, but I still don't think even then I could have watched everything there was and the community has grown so fast ever since so Maria I know for many people Maria is the first and if she's not she's certainly the one that often makes the biggest impact she still makes the biggest impact on me even um, I've seen sometimes people talk about how her style has changed and has become more polished. And they like the, the old school, Maria. Um, I like them all. I have some favorites from a very long time ago and some favorites from five years ago and my latest favorite is, um, it's probably 15 videos back. Um, she does a kind of design, personal fashion design kind of video. And she has a closet f uh, of maybe 10 items behind her, plus two handbags. And she talks about different fashion types on her iPad first, in the first half of the video. And then in the second half, she'll pull out each garment and talk about it. I've watched that video at least 30 to 40 times. Parts of it, probably even more. Um, so she definitely triggers me, especially when she handles patent leather bags. And one of my longtime favorites of hers from many years ago uh, was her home shopping channel um, handbag video. And I recently found, um, shoot, Her name escapes me. I'll think of it in a minute or I'll post it right here. I found a video from a few years ago by someone else that absolutely reminds me of a, it has to be a, a tribute video of the original Maria video. If you watch them side by side, they're both equally enchanting in different ways, but they include the same elements, the same um, setup. Uh, very similar types of pur purses. Um, and so I've been obsessing over that video lately too. So I'll link both of those videos. Um, so 
this is why. I loved being able to introduce you to my mod handbag. In my latest uh, Avon video and this one, I believe, I said it in 1968, but getting ready to roll the camera or the uh, calendar over into 1969, so one of the later videos in terms of the timeline, because I wanted to start breaking out some of my more mod dresses and other props like this bag. But when <laughs> when Maria handles patent leather I just lose all consciousness. She handles different pieces and you can hear the buckles and the clasp. is nice because it's so deep. Very, very deep. So when it's full of things, I can reach down in there and make those rummaging sounds. I'll tell you who the best at rummaging is, Rebecca. I know many of you subscribe to Rebecca's beautiful ASMR addiction. If you want good rummaging videos, she's your gal. I could watch and listen to Maria Handel vinyl and patent leather all day long. And this is another vinyl bag that I have. It's not patent leather. I used it in my recent Taste of Tupperware video. But I've also used it in some older videos. One of my one of my pharmacy videos, I believe. Um, a couple of videos that take place at the kitchen table, where I'm bringing home some things that I've bought and I've used. This is a little tote. That makes this telltale leather and vinyl sounds. Heavy plastic. Rebecca is also fantastic with heavy plastic. Pockets, zippers.
This reminds me of a trigger that I absolutely adore, but I don't do it in my own videos. And that is tracing. So if there's a design, maybe a book or a magazine, I love it when people will maybe trace the letters. a headline at the top of a newspaper or the title of a chapter or maybe the design on the cover of something. Oh, I love that so much. But I don't really do that in my videos. I guess maybe because I have settled on um, a niche, if you will, to make videos that are realistic, that are role plays, things one would actually do in the 60s, and um, I might have a couple of just very quick moments when my finger might trace one letter, but that's it. I try not to show my microphone. Sometimes it sneaks in. Um, but I want to create as realistic an experience as possible. the main thing that's not realistic is maybe how slow I handle things and I know a few people have complained about that but that's just my rhythm for my channel and there are lots of other channels out there that go faster others that go much much slower I love how Maria can tap her nails against something in a way that sounds random. So she's not a kind of tapper. I hate that. She's very gentle and random. I find her sister Olga in uh, ASMR Sense uh, is very similar in the way that she handles her hands and fingers and nails. So let's see. thing about why I chose the 1960s. When I, through the years, I occasionally thought, why, why don't I start an ASMR channel? But I didn't really think my voice had anything to offer never really been fond of my voice. I certainly didn't think my hands had anything to offer. Uh, I get a lot of compliments on my hands, so you might think that's funny of me, but let me just show you. Are where my hands come from. <laughs> Kiss nails. When I first started my channel, um, I've 
always had really short fingernails and long fingers and I used to play the piano and my mom always loved my hands because they were piano hands but I did buy some gel uh, polishes the whole gel system and with the LED light or I don't know if it's LED or not um, anyway, whatever light you need to put your, your gel nails in to get the polish to harden. And so in my very first videos, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing short nails with different colors. Some of them are pretty odd. <laughs> and then I watched, um, a video again one of Rebecca's videos where she talked about how she did her nails and she introduced me to Kiss Nails um, and this was after I was kind of frustrated with gel um, because of the damage that it was doing to my nails so I started using these these have been wonderful because been able to put these on and not polish you can see and I use the nails like this when I want a more natural setting so anytime I am a mother or at the kitchen table you'll tend to see natural nails or at the library uh, but then I'll polish them polish very nicely um, if I am at the executive desk or the secretary's desk at the uh, at the department store especially a few of you have asked me what colors I use and I brought three here um Probably the most common color is this is OPI um, Aphrodite's Pink Nighty. <laughs> this is um, will that focus? So that's the use quite often and then the other one that I use that's more dramatic this one is from Sally Hansen and it's called can't beat royalty and beat is spelled B E E E E T. <laughs> so the vegetable can't beat royalty. This color is absolutely stunning. I just love it. It makes me feel so glam when I wear it. I also have another Sally Hansen. This one is tool much t-u-l-l-e -L -L -E, tool much and that is a lighter pink much lighter and this is the deeper pink this is reading a little bit like maybe a moth on the screen right now but it's when it goes on it's a solid pink but not Pepto-Bismol pink took me a long time to find this one that wasn't too light and wasn't too peptobismal and didn't get into the mauve range so these are my three favorites okay so 
I'm probably going on too long. Let's see. I absolutely would have liked to be a sales lady <laughs> in the 60s. Um, I know this because when I was a kid, um, when we would go to the department store and the, um, the one we went to had that whole pneumatic tube system that I sometimes try to replicate in my department store videos. And I just thought that was so cool. I couldn't wait until I was old enough to work behind the counter um, in the handbag department or the toy department and take people's charge cards. They weren't credit cards then. I'd take the charge card and fill out the form and put it in the pneumatic tube and swoosh it up to the um, bookkeeping or accounting or whoever it was that approved such things. Couldn't wait. I never did, but I would say the closest I got was working at a bank as a teller and I enjoyed that job quite a bit. I was in college at the time, but um, I had that job for three years and loved it. I loved counting money. Not that I wanted the money, I just liked having a big wad of money and flipping through and counting it as fast as I could. I got very good at that. Um, talk a little bit about how I make my videos, how I go about making them, and what my favorite parts of the process are. So I have a my whole um, the notes app on my iPhone. My whole ASMR channel life is in that notes app. Um, and there I have I have notes about every story idea um, when I settle on an idea then I start listing props that I might need I'll categorize them into things I already have and things I need to look for um, I'll brainstorm names of things. So I've got a big long list here of names that I was thinking about for the Juniper Room. Um, so uh, basically I have a list of ideas and then from there I put them into a numbered list of the next 10 or 20 videos that I want to do and in what order. Um, and then sometimes I'll move the order around depending on how well I'm doing at uh, sourcing props. So that way I've got that list if I go into a thrift store. I can look at the first few videos on the list and uh, be looking for props for multiple videos at the same time. Sometimes it takes a long, long time to source all the props I need for a particular video. Um, that was certainly the case for uh, my pharmacy videos. And if you haven't seen those, I'll link um, a playlist in one of these corners. Um, and you can check those out. That was by far my most elaborate set and was so much fun putting together, but it took a while. So I didn't rush it. I kept making other videos while I, um, worked on that set and on those particular props. 
I get my props where you probably would imagine I get them. Um, the more unusual things, uh, if it's something that I need specifically, I find from Etsy or eBay. Um, so I was looking for a 10 key adding machine. The chances of randomly running into one of those at a flea market, estate sale, thrift shop were pretty low. So that's an example of something I looked for on Etsy and um, eBay, ended up finding one on eBay. Some of my uh, pharmacy set pieces I had to find on Etsy or eBay. And then others, um, this is one of my favorite all-time props. <laughs> It's a little bit heavy. <laughs> this beauty was um, was not something I was looking for, so I didn't find it on Etsy or eBay. I just ran into it. I don't know if you can hear that truck. If you can hear it, this is the sort of thing I have to edit out. <laughs> but isn't this just phenomenal? I saw this and immediately knew it would be the centerpiece of my Flamingo Motel counter. So sometimes I stumble upon something. I already knew I was going to do a motel video, but I ventured to say if I had not already planned that and ran into this, this then would have given me the idea to do a motel video and would have given me the name Flamingo. So I just love this. It does light up. There's a light bulb behind here, but I could not make the light work um, just right for the light settings that I wanted. Um, it was emitting too much light and that was darkening other areas of my set. So I just kept it like this, but it worked perfectly. That's a very favorite prop. And like I said, one I found entirely by accident and I'm sure many people <laughs> who saw me checking out with it uh, wondered what in the world I was going to do with it or why I wanted it. Here's another favorite prop and I know it's a favorite of many of you. This one first came out, I think, I'm not sure if it was on the, at the kitchen table, but it's definitely been at any of the department store videos where I have a velvet cloth on the counter and it allows me to clean up my workspace. Very gently. It's hollow. I love those hollow sounds. I think um, Maria has a hairbrush that everyone goes crazy over. A wooden hairbrush, and when she taps it, it has a hollow sound to it. I love the color. It doesn't take long to figure out that I am a lover of aqua and turquoise. 
and yellow. So if this is one of your favorite props, you'll be happy to know it's one of my favorite. Um, so I have my ideas always circulating. Certain TV shows give me ideas. Um, I've gotten ideas for Mad Men, of course. I mean, ridiculous number of ideas for Mad Men. From my childhood memories, I just try to think of all the standard places that we went. You know, it's not rocket science to think about a secretary, a grocery store, which I haven't really done, the bank, the post office, um, the department store. My mom was not a secretary, but her work environment was very similar. She, uh, she was an insurance underwriter, so she worked in an office environment, and any time I visited her at work, I was able to see in all of its glory <laughs> all the secretary's desks and all the little tchotchkes on their desks and the different things that they did so methodically and carefully I might sit and play in the floor next to my mom's desk and uh, I could hear her doing her work Occasionally she'd say something to me, but mostly she was busy at work, and I loved listening to those sounds. Um, so, in this house, right now we're in our living room, and uh, we have another room that's technically called the family room, but we call it the game room. Um, we used to play ping pong in there, uh, but our, <laughs> our backs and necks, my husband and I, are not in great shape, so. But there's an extra dining room table in there for parties and to people, people can spread out, an extra couch and so forth, um. So when I first started making my videos, I made them all at my kitchen table. I have a dining room as well as a separate kitchen table. And um, I don't know how long it was before I made my first video in the game room, but I think it was a secretary, a no-talking secretary video. And... Uh, just didn't take long for me to take over that room. <laughs> I guess the good news at the time was that COVID was happening and we stopped having any guests over. We didn't have anybody over, not even my dad. If we did, we would sit outside in the cold and build a bonfire. So, uh, for that reason, I I didn't need much excuse to take over every nook and cranny of that room, and I did. Um, I did all sorts of videos at that table while I was building the pharmacy set in one corner, and then would also do videos at the kitchen table. Once I did the pharmacy, I realized I essentially had a set space that would work great for other things that needed a counter as opposed to sitting at a table. And so I basically just left that space set up, uh, moved things around for different uh, videos. So um, the motel, Flamingo Motel, Meridian Pharmacy, um, 
all of the Stearns department store counters, um, the Juniper Room, all of those take place, the library, they all take place in the exact same set, um, with the same supports for the counter, even if I change what the counter itself is made of. Um, I've got the same sort of buffet behind me that I can put things on, and I can put shelves against the wall if I want, or I can put wood or a styrofoam board covered in wallpaper against the back. Uh, or hang drapes. Um, so that's basically how I build the big parts of my sets. And the rest is just props. Um, of course, I make some things. I make a lot of paper things. Um, you know, anything that's like an ID or uh, a driver's license, a library card. I usually find vintage things online and mock them up based on those vintage things. Uh, I might actually print out the vintage item itself and then kind of crinkle the paper a little bit so it looks like it's been handled a bit. Um, my, I have two favorite parts of making a video. I don't know if you'll find this funny or not. <laughs> um, but I'll start with my least favorite, and that is recording the video. That's my least favorite part. I'm not sure why. Um, I guess because I have to hope that things will go right and that I'll not forget to turn the sound on the microphone or um, the camera. Early on, I made a lot of mistakes like that. Um, or that I have everything I need and that I've not forgotten something and have to go either decide to eliminate it from the video or go get it and set it up. There's just a lot of moving parts to, to actually clicking um, the record button on uh, my recorder for my mic as well as uh, for my video camera. My favorite is, no surprise, sourcing props. That's, that is my big adventure and one of the reasons why I've selected the 60s because all of these props bring back so many good memories for me. And uh, I'm an optimistic person who tr who's always trending toward happiness. So that doesn't mean my life is happy all the time. But I'm the kind of person that will try to change things in my life to move it in that direction. And my childhood memories make me very happy. I know not everybody's do. And I'm, I'm sorry any time I trigger a bad memory for you. I know that I've done that in a couple of cases. Um, but I hope most of what I do brings you comfort and relaxation and maybe some good nostalgia. My second favorite part is editing videos. And I know a lot of YouTubers might uh, think otherwise, but... I really do love editing and bringing everything together. That's when I feel like I have a lot of control and things aren't going to go wrong. So, um, some of my, um, props have come from family members or from me. Things I've collected over the years, that's what I used when I first started making my videos. I didn't really buy anything except the camera. Um, do I do my nails myself or go to a salon? I've explained that. 
um, makeup and skincare recommendations, which I find hilarious since you've never seen my face. Um, uh, but I do like uh, Murad, uh, Mur Murad or Murad products for my face. Um, they've got one that's a more general serum and one that works on dark spots, age spots. Um, I'm not really, I either don't mind my wrinkles or I'm not so plagued by wrinkles, but I am plagued by dark spots. That really bothers me. So I find that um, Murad works very well for me. Um, and there's some, um, uh, it's pronounced L'Occitane. It's a French brand. Um, a foot, foot um, cream. It's shea butter uh, that I like a lot as well. But you never see my feet or my face. And you never will. <laughs> so, um, as far as what's coming up um, with the channel, um, I'm not going to make any big changes. I'm going to continue making videos um, using sets that are as authentic as I can make them. A couple things um, that you might be seeing. I was able to find these, um, what are they called? Number one jif number one jiffy shipping bag. Let's see if you can see that. Right there. These are vintage padded bags. I did not want to get um, padded bags that had um, bubble wrap inside because that's not what was used back then. So these actually have um, scraps of paper, like shredded paper, probably newspaper, inside. Um, not that you can see, but it's what makes the padding right here on either side. You can hear it. I wanted to get a different kind of packaging into my post office videos. Post office and Avon are my most popular. Isn't that funny? So that's coming. Something that's been requested quite often is something to do with airlines. And this is a prop that one of my family members got me for Christmas. And it will be coming your way sometime this year. A series of videos that will take place at the ticket counter as well as in the flight itself. So I'll be working behind the ticket counter and I will be working as a stewardess for Pan Am Airlines. And, let's see, I've got one other, I think. Oh, I've got two more. Uh, one of my supporters bought something on my wish list on Throne. And it's this hairbrush. And I'm going to start making some 
hair related videos. You've seen my Avon brush, so I can use I can use that to part. Uh, but I'll be able to use this for long strokes, brushing hair and so forth. Both at the kitchen table, those will come first before I get to uh, a, a hair salon. That'll take a little while to uh, find the props for that. And the last thing that's coming up, I'll give you a hint, is this shelf. It made an appearance very, very briefly in the Barbie video, the sick child video. It was on the wall with a couple of little porcelain poodles and things like that. But this will be used in an ice cream shop or soda shop kind of setting. So you can count on that coming your way this year. So I've got lots of new sets planned in addition to some of my favorites. The uh, Avon is not going anywhere. And of course I'm starting with Tupperware. So um, I believe it's on January 28th. Uh, I think that's when um, Wadeen Campbell booked her Tupperware party. <laughs> so um, we'll have lots of fun with Tupperware this year uh, with different deliveries and demonstrations, parties and so forth. So that's what I've got for you in this new year. I um, hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about me. Um, I love it when you tell me a little bit about you and your comments. I love getting to know you. I have a few long timers that um, we've shared quite a bit back and forth and that really makes me happy to get to know you over the long term. Um, never be shy about sending me video ideas. I may or may not be able to do them. They may not fit with my niche. But usually there's a piece of an idea that I can work with. And in many cases, I'm absolutely able to um, create the scene that you have in mind. Um, I had a request to do part of this whispers and part of this in um, soft spoken. I went ahead and did all soft spoken, uh, but I will be doing a whisper video coming up soon. So, um, I hope you all are having a wonderful new year so far. I um, hope you feel hopeful and relaxed above all.